We're going to do another midterm example problem, this time on transmission line per unit length parameters and lossy transmission lines. To start with, we're doing the um, problems 2.2 and 2.7 out of the textbook <clears throat> because they're related to each other. So we'll start with problem 2.2, which says a two-wire copper transmission line is embedded in a dielectric material with relative dielectric constant 2.6 and conductivity 2 times 10 to the minus 6 Siemens per meter. Its wires are separated by 3 centimeters and the wire radius is one millimeter. So we're asked to calculate the line parameters, the per unit length line parameters. So we need to know R prime, L prime, G prime, and C prime at two gigahertz. Um, and then part B of this problem asks you to use the CD module, but we're more interested in how do you solve this problem. So I'm gonna skip that bit. And then for the second uh, problem, 2.7, we're also asked to find the attenuation constant, phase constant, phase velocity, and characteristic impedance. So we've got to find all of these eight different quantities. <clears throat> Here's how we do it. The per unit length parameters uh, come out of table 2-1 in the book. And for two-wire transmission line, we're looking at this column right in the middle here. It's important to note that RS right there, the formula for RS is given to us right there. So let's work this out. I'm using MATLAB to do my calculations. You can also use a calculator or your computer or type into the Google search bar. There are a lot of different ways to do this, but I'm not showing you that bit. I'm just going to write down what the formula is and then tell you what it works out to be. So RS, based on this formula right here, is square root of pi times the frequency, which is 2 gigahertz, times the uh, magnetic permeability in the material divided by sigma. And these parameters here refer to the conductor material. Which is copper. So in that case, um, mu is the permeability of free space and sigma is 5.8 8 times 10 to the seventh, which you can get from Appendix B. And the frequency is 2 gigahertz, like we just said, and is right above this line right here. So if I put all those numbers into my calculator software, whatever it is that I'm using, I get that RS is 0 0.117 ohms. All right. I'm going to have to use that in the next part, so I'm going to use it. R prime from the table is 2 RS divided by pi times D. This little D is the diameter of the wires, so that would be 2 millimeters. Putting all that in, 0 0.117 ohms, 2 pi, 2 millimeters, I get 3.7139, which is way too many significant figures. Let's say 3.71 ohms per meter. So that's my per unit length resistance. Next, L prime. I look back at my table. I get 
this equation for the per unit length inductance. So how do I write that? I've got mu divided by pi times natural log of big D is the uh, separation between the wires and little d is the diameter of the wires. So the ratio of the separation to the diameter divided by big D over little d squared minus 1, close parentheses. Okay, so this mu right here refers to uh, the dielectric material. that is between the wires. So if I put all of this stuff in and I recognize that the wire sep is, the wire separation is whoop, three centimeters and the wire diameter is two millimeters. And I can put that in for these terms right here. What I get is 1.36 micro henries per meter. Next, we need the conductance per unit length. That one, again from the table, now we're looking at the third line, is pi sigma divided by the same natural log term. This natural log term keeps popping up because it's a geometric factor. <clears throat> this is what you get when you do those contour integrals on those Gauss's law surface integrals um, to find things like the electric flux and the magnetic flux, you get this term. And it depends on the geometry of the structure. So it's different for different types of transmission lines. Now remember that the conductivity, sorry, the conductance term is for leakage current traveling through the dielectric between the two wires. So charges that are flowing this way between the two wires because we're applying a, a voltage difference across them. And what, so this conductance refers to the dielectric material parameters. And what I get when I evaluate this whole thing is 1.85 micro siemens per meter. <clears throat> the last thing for problem 2.2 is the capacitance per unit length. That equation looks a lot like the conductance per unit length. It is pi epsilon, again refers to the dielectric, divided by natural log of all that stuff. Again, I got that out of the table. So now we are on the fourth line right here. Now remember, in the problem we were given that the dielectric uh, relative permittivity is 2.6. That doesn't mean that this epsilon value right here is 2.6. That means that that epsilon value right there is 2.6 times the permittivity of free space. And if you remember, the permittivity of free space is 8.8 five, four times 10 to the minus 12th farads per meter. So you have to plug that in there. If you just put in 2.6, you'll get an obscenely large number for C prime, and that will not work out well. But if you put in these correct values, um, what I got for the capacitance per unit length is 21.3 picofarads per meter. And that's the end of problem 2.2. For problem 2.7, we have a couple more 
things to work out. And that is we have to find alpha, beta, phase velocity, and characteristic impedance. Um, so alpha is the attenuation constant and beta is the phase constant. When you're working with a lossy transmission line, um, the way to find alpha and beta is to use the propagation constant gamma and recognize that gamma is equal to alpha, which is its real part, plus j beta, and beta is the imaginary part. And then we can make the propagation constant using r prime plus j omega l prime times g prime plus j omega c prime. Um, we will also use the fact that the phase velocity is omega over beta, and we will use the fact that the characteristic impedance is the square root of r prime plus j omega l prime divided by g prime plus j omega c prime. Working all of that stuff out, starting with gamma. I just put all this stuff in MATLAB. So what I got was, oh, and remember, your, your student ID comes with a free MATLAB license. So you can download that from the UMass IT website if you haven't done that already. I recommend installing it because it's really handy to have around. Um, so what I got by evaluating that, it's really good at complex numbers, <clears throat> is 0 0.0076 plus J67.64. And the units of this are 1 over meters. That sounds weird, but that's what the units are. And for the real part, that real part is just alpha, so technically its units are neppers per meter. And... The imaginary part is beta, so its units are really radians per meter. But neppers and radians are both weird unitless units, so both of them are actually 1 over meters, because you just multiply them by meters. So there's our alpha value, and there is our beta value. We're half done. Our phase velocity is omega over beta. So we got 2 times pi times 2 gigahertz divided by the beta value we just found, so 67.64. And what we end up with is 1.86 times 10 to the 8th meters per second for our phase velocity. Lastly, for the characteristic impedance, we're going to use all of the values that we found in problem 2.2 and put all those per unit length parameters into this equation for their characteristic impedance. Remember that omega is 2 pi times the frequency, and the frequency we're working with right now is 2 gigahertz. And when we do that, we get that the characteristic impedance of this line is 253 minus j 0 0.0266 ohms. And this is almost purely real, which is how it should be for a good transmission line that's made out of a